I'm um, Rob White, 30 years old, trained out at Reed Academy in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I've been training for, I'll say five or six years. Started off at Cincy MMA, Chad Hinton and guys. And uh, once that gym closed down, I moved over to Drive uh, and trained under Josh Rafferty and with Scott Wegman and them guys. And then I moved out to Reed a little bit after that. Training's going great. Um, you know, it's always good when a lot of people have fights or people, not necessarily even on this card, but fights even around, you know, like people are in different spots, like uh, um, Matt Rahman just had a fight. Um, so when I'm starting my camp, he's like in the middle of his, so he's really sharp and they would beat up on me, which kind of, you know, helps me move and get in better shape when he's already in better shape than I am. And, you know, it's going really well right now. Everybody's really sharp, so. Um, I would say Portland, uh, uh, competition-wise, he's probably one of the scariest guys I fought uh, to date. Um, and when he was presented to me, the first thing I thought was like, man, I can't fight him. You know, he was a weight class up, he, you know, bigger, supposed to be stronger. But when I do choose opponents, that's that's the opponents I want to fight. The, the, first, the person that scares me the most is the one I want to step into the cage with because that's the person that if I beat is going to get me to where I want to go. So I knew um, once that was presented to me on late notice, it was a huge opportunity. So I didn't want to turn it down. And then when we got in there, uh, and you know, like from the outside of the cage, everybody doesn't really see what's going on in the inside of the cage. You know, we moved around for a little bit, even though the fight was over uh, relatively fast. But he threw a couple combinations and threw some jabs, and I was able to catch his punches, and I knew that I had a speed advantage on him. So once I recognized that, I threw the head kick, and uh, I picked up on. I threw two head kicks in the fight. Actually, the first time I threw a head kick, um, the way he defended it was. The way you're supposed to, he brought up both his hands, but he moved his hand off to the side, which left him exposed. So the second time I threw it, I threw it with the intention that I was going to follow up with a hook. And as soon as I threw the kick, same thing, and caught him with the hook. And then I saw his eyes roll back, and I was like, got to pounce on him, because I didn't want him to come back. So. Um... I consider myself an elite fighter at this point. I work really hard. I feel like I have a really good skill set. Josh, you know, he was signed on M1. He's fought some really tough guys. Uh, I would say he's on a, a kind of a downward slope right now with his record stuff like that. Mentally, you know, and I try to say this as humbly as I can, but I'm coming in to finish it. You know, like, yeah, I just, it, it, I expect the same thing to happen in the last fight. I'm coming in to finish him, to end the fight, you know, and I don't think he has the skill set to stop me. I, and I'm not trying to be cocky or arrogant. That's just where I am. I have a huge chip on my shoulder right now because I sacrifice so much. I train hard, and uh, I'm just uh, finished playing games, you know, like. Ultimately, my goal is the USC. Um, that's just where I want to go. And, and you know, I watch some of the undercar fights and some of the prelims, and I already know skill-wise, I can get in there with them guys. I already know, you know, or well, at least I feel that way. Um, I think if I get another impressive win on February 27th, I think at least some type of door should be open somewhere, you know, whether that is UFC or whether, you know, Bellator calls back or whatever. Um, it's kind of hard to deny, especially with the quality of opponents I've been fighting. It's not like I've taken any uh, easy fights or padded my record or anything like that. I've always gone for the toughest guy that will take the fight with me. So, And I think Josh has got the experience um, and he's been around long enough that an impressive win over him will start turning some heads and maybe I'll get a shot at uh, the UFC or something like that. Pro fighters. It depends on what your goal is. You know, like, a lot of people, 
only like the image of being a fighter, the idea of being a fighter. You know, they want to get fights, not to be the best or face the toughest opponents or say, you know, you're a monster, but I'm a bigger monster, but to say, I fight, let me post it on Facebook, let me get this glory and recognition for being a fighter without really wanting to have those, have those aspirations to be the best. The reason I take the toughest fights, the reason I fight the hardest people is because I either am or I'm not. There's, you can't fake it. You know, they say fake it to make it. You can't do that in MMA. If you're beating guys who are 0-6, 0-7, you know, 1-5 and, and you're finishing them in the first round and then you get an opportunity to fight somebody with a winner record who's a monster and you get in there and you get exposed. You know, all that, all those other wins, it doesn't mean anything because you haven't fought anybody. So, if your goals are to get to the UFC or, you know, sign with Bellator and, and that's what you want to be, uh, you're going to have to face some monsters, you know. That, and think about it. You know, this, this is a business is along with good fighters. But, you know, just being a good fighter won't get you there. You know, like, the UFC, they want good fighters, but they want people who are going to sell tickets. You know, like, they want people who are going to have fans come up and watch the fight. So... If you got a guy who's a monster and everybody's looking at this guy, he, man, he's up and coming, he's really good, and you step in there and you destroy him or knock him out, uh, you're turning hands now. You're like, whoa, this is who we want to come to our show. So for me, it's not a question of getting a 10-0 record or 11-0 record or anything like that. I want to fight the best guy, the scariest guy, and I want to destroy him. That's, that's it. So you can't deny what I am. You know, I don't care if you don't like me in locally. I don't care if you don't like the gym I train out of. None of that stuff. You can't deny what I am. You look at my record, you look at the people I fought, and you're like, he's legit. You can't deny that, you know? And that, that doesn't come from uh, being 7-0 and and you've never, ever fought somebody with a winning record. What does that prove, you know? Yeah, you give me a guy that's 1-6, and six, I'm going to finish him 30 seconds every single time. I don't want to do that. That's not what a real fighter is. Absolute Action MMA returns to the Bank of Kentucky Center on Friday, February 27th. Don't miss your chance to see the fastest growing sport in the world live. See the future superstars of mixed martial arts now as they compete on Absolute Action MMA's biggest fight card to date. Absolute Action MMA 41, live from the Bank of Kentucky Center, Friday, February 27th. Tickets are available now at Ticketmaster and the Bank of Kentucky Center box office.